Right, so needed a little coffee break after that one. We've got two more tables to basically edit, which is the client table and the user table. So let's get into that. All right, so let's jump into the client table. Now, we've already added the logo column. What we wanna do is add the website column. So that's just a URL. We're gonna call that website bang done next one the text column this is going to be called the brand summary so when they're creating their profile after we've invited them they'll enter their name their uh, profile image and then they'll fill in some information about their business and we'll use this information um, you know as a graphic designer to customize all the work we do according to their brand guidelines and summary and ethos and that sort of thing so this is obviously used as, um, the example I'm using for this particular application is like if you're a graphic designer or something like that. But you can imagine if you were building websites or you were doing any other sort of freelance service for someone or video editing, whatever it is, you can use their, um, the onboarding process to gather information about them as a business and then use that information again in the future when you're actually completing their projects. So we create the brand summary. The next thing we want to do is create the brand guidelines. And this is going to be a link, but it's going to be a link to a PDF that they upload. So during this onboarding process, they'll be asked to add uh, their brand guidelines document. And that document will then be uploaded and the link will show here. So what we want to do is call this brand guidelines and we make this a URL as well so up next what we want to do is add something called a plan ID and I want to drag this to the start again just behind the name you never want to drag anything before the name because when you're referencing it in other tables you'll see just a random number I'll give you a quick example now Right now, we are referencing the user ID. And when we look up that user, it's showing us Marco Volpato. So in the users table, that's because this is first. However, if I, for example, had a different column, let's just, you know, make this whatever, random text, and that had different information, and this was before my name, if we look back here, we'll see the user as that. So we don't want that. You always want to keep the row ID the very first and then the name of the record or the, the row as the next thing along. So let's get rid of this random stuff. Uh, so what was I doing? I was adding the plan ID. So now that we've added the ID, we want to form a relation between this row and the appropriate ID. So we're gonna look up, using the plan ID, we're gonna look up plans and match it with that. So we're gonna call this plan. So this is bringing it in as an object. And then obviously what we wanna do is tell Glide what we want, what specific information we want from that object. And in this case, it's going to be the plan name. So what we can do is I can just create an example and say that this client is on this plan, which is the light plan. Out of that object, we want to pull out the name. That's all that's doing. Next, we want to create a relation column. And what we're going to do here is this is going to be projects. And what we want to do is using the row ID we want to look through all of the projects and pull in any projects where the client ID matches the current client's ID. And we want to be able to match multiple because a client may have multiple projects. So we pull that in there. And this will make sense once we input a little bit of data. So let's just continue here. What we want to do now is 
uh, pull in. Uh, sorry, we want to create a split value. Sorry, a joined list. Bear with me. <laughs> we want to create a joined list. And we want to join all of the from projects, we want to join all of the requested months. And we want to separate them by a comma. So what this is going to do is, let's just say that this client, let's call this just example client. Let's just say that they're the ones that have created this project and this project is called example project. So this current client whose ID is this and they're on this plan has this particular project. And what we want to do is out of all the projects that they have that they've requested, we want this column to create a joined list of the dates that those requests were placed. So what we're doing essentially is telling it, okay, all the projects that are here, there could be multiple, just pull out the date and put it into a list that's separated by a comma. So if there was another project that had September, it would be September 2022, comma, September 2022. Then what we want to do is create a math column where it pulls in the current date. So we're going to say this is the current day. It's going to be a math column. The formula is going to be now. And now it's going to equal now. And that just means it's basically pulling in today's date. We only want the date and the format can be medium. That's not a problem. So the current day is September 27th of September 2022. And this is going to be used to see how many they have placed, how many requests they have placed in the current month. Again, might be a little bit confusing now, but I promise you it'll make sense. This is all here for a reason. There's nothing I've added here that isn't actually necessary. Now, what we want to do is then format this current date. So um, we want to change it to something called current month. And we're going to use that dark uh, data, date and time field. And the date we want to format is the current date and we want it the same as we had it before. So what this is going to do now is it's going to say, okay, the current month is September. How many projects have, were requested in September? If that number is below their quota on the plan, then they can place another request. However, if their quota is four and there are four projects that were requested in September and the current month is still September, then they, the ability to request new projects will be hidden, basically. So we've got the current month. Now what we want to do is look up the plan and see how many requests are on their quota. So this is going to be a lookup. We're going to look up the plan and we're going to see how many requests. So you can see that this particular client has four requests, not quote, it should be quota. I'm going to make this mistake many, many times. So yeah, this is going to be the quota. And then what we want to do now, this is when a little bit of custom code is going to be used. And this is why like a lot of people think that the tools out there that are no code require zero code at all. And it's not really true. I think all of the no code platforms out there are actually low code platforms, especially if you want to customize it or build anything that has um, a bit of substance to it, a bit of um, complexity to it. So now we want to add a little bit of code. And this is going to be pretty simple once I explain it, hopefully. And we're going to call this requests left. So 
Oh, sorry, this is requests made in the month. So what we want to do is head to other. We're going to click code and then it's going to be uh, JavaScript. So we're going to add a little bit of JavaScript. And I'm not going to type this out now just in case I make an error. But this is the code. This is the code that we want to add. Don't worry about this error for now. This is the code. And P1 is going to be the joined list of the months. And P2 is going to be the current month. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to say, okay, the current month is September. I'm going to search through that joined list of months for all the projects and count how many match this particular month. So if it's September and there is one project that was placed in September, then it's going to count them and it's going to say, well, I can see that there is one request made in September. Then what we do is we just do a simple math column and this is going to be quota minus made. And what we're going to see is that this is how many requests they have left. So I hope that makes sense. Um, they're on their plan. They have four requests available. They've made one request in the current month of September. Um, you can see here, it's still the current month. So they have four minus one, they have three requests left. If I went to this project and change the requested date from now to, I don't know if this works. Oh, it does. Okay. That's cool. If I change it to last month and we go back here, you'll see that it's now changed. It's pulling in um, the project from August. The current month is September. So there's been no requests made in September. And so they have four requests left. So <clears throat> I hope that, yeah, makes sense. That's why we had to add that little bit of code. There are ways to do it without adding the JavaScript, but it's so much simpler. Just add that little snippet and I can add the snippet below or um, I'll zoom in on it now so you can kind of see what you need to copy and paste. But that's all you need to do and it just makes your life a lot easier if you just add a little bit of code like that. So now that we've added that, we just want to add a few more columns. And the first one we want to add is the total requests. Um, and this is going to be how many requests were completed. And this is just information that we're going to show on their dashboard. So what we want to do is get a roll up of projects that have a final image. So we want to count how many. Um, we can leave the group separator. So what this is going to do, it's going to count how many projects have a final image attached to them. Then that's going to consider it complete. And then it's going to add, it's going to add to the sum here. You could change this from looking at whether the final image exists to just looking for statuses that say complete. There's many ways you can do it. But for example, if we went into projects and this project had an image here, then back here, it would say that you've had one request that is totally completed. Then what we want to do is add another roll up and we want to um, count how many projects are currently in the queued status. And this is going to be a sum. The precision is going to be one and we don't need a group separator. So let me just check that that's correct. Queued count, sum one, yep. So this is now going to count how many projects are currently queued. So 
this is the one that I got a little bit confused on before, but it makes sense now. We want to count how many uh, projects that any given client has um, that are in the queued status. And then the last one is just how many projects are currently uh, or have been processed. And process means anything other than in a queue. It means you've noticed it and you've actually processed it, whether it's complete or whether it's in progress. So processed, and this is going to be a count. We're going to roll up. We're going to summarize the value of only their projects, not obviously the other ones. This client's projects, we're going to get the count and we're going to count the sum. And of course, my eyes are watering again for no reason. I promise I'm not upset. <laughs> um, so, queued count, process count, that's it for the client table. The last table we're going to work on is the users table. We're almost there, guys, and then we're going to start building the interface. So, let's jump onto the users table. If you enjoyed that video or you found it useful, then I highly suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon because I have a ton of low-code videos and tutorials in the pipeline for you. And if you like the idea of becoming a low-code developer who can create anything their mind can imagine without code, head to lowcode.com and sign up for one of our online boot camps. See you next time.